I figured I would document my journey going to the book law for the first time since a pandemic. It's currently 516. They are doing appointment only, so we made a 5 of 30 appointment. We're gonna go. We've got our masks. And I'm excited. I'm probably gonna cry. Oh. Ready? <laughs> yep, don't forget a mask. Oh, you're right. They won't let you in. Tragedy. Oh, <laughs> you don't have to go in. I can go in by myself. I do want to go in. I'm just nervous about going places. I know. I am too. It's not but... the book loss fault. It's everything else. Don't All right, go. let's go. Gary's not gonna be there though, so no. like, what, in reality, what's the fucking point? I think the last time I went to the book loft was in like, what, February? We went right before quarantine, like three or four weeks before. Yeah, and then Ian and I did curbside pickup for our anniversary from there. And I've ordered books from them online during this. Like I've ordered a couple Vonnegut books. I did their mystery box option. And then I did another curbside pickup right before they reopened for appointment only. They're only letting like 24 people in at a time and you have to wear a mask to go in. And yeah, I think that's all I really wanted to say as a preface before we go. The entrance is different. They have things blocked off. They have hand sanitizer stations. Um, I guess we'll get a full feel for when we get there. But I wanted to vlog it because I talked about supporting independent bookstores in a pandemic and I kind of want to see how the biggest independent bookstore in Columbus is handling this because the book loft has always gone above and beyond in terms of like doing things <laughs> so I'm very curious to see how they're adapting to this especially with Gary helping out with things like mad respect mad love all hail Malamarcus I can't wait to feel his presence consume me once more <laughs> there she is. Reunited and it feels so felt comfortable vlogging in here because it's always super busy and crowded. I'm not having a panic attack and we're here on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Which is usually the busiest day. Yeah, Saturdays and Sundays are usually the busiest day and we've seen um, two groups of two mm -hmm. or three. Two. Two groups of two and then I saw like a single person walking around. So that's pretty neat when normally there's like hundreds of people in here. I'm so happy to be back in my favorite place of all time and I'm getting pretty emotional.
whispering like we're in a oh, library. No. Oh no. Just let it be known that even during this time, there's still garbage in this world. Ow. I can't leave that in here. There's hand sanitizer. I'll sanitize my hands after I throw it away. The bag has been secured. So we are back to the wonderful world of our home and air conditioning. We've washed our hands. And I wanted to show you my book haul and talk about what it was like walking around the book loft today. So the first thing is, like I mentioned uh, at the beginning, is that this was an appointment based uh, experience. So the book loft is taking appointments on a website through like Square, like the card readers. Um, you can book appointments that way. They're free appointments and they're for five minute time slots. The time slot is basically like your time to enter the store. It doesn't amount for your uh, total time. So it's now 6.30. So we spent around 45 minutes there, which is what I was anticipating. I was like, uh, we're probably gonna spend around 45 minutes. I'm probably gonna spend $100. The second one didn't happen. Can't believe it. But you walk in, we're greeted by a bookseller wearing a mask and he guides us to a table with hand sanitizer and gloves. The gloves are optional. And he's like, have a great time. And there's like, it looks like caution tape or like electrical tape that's like colored yellow and black. Um, and they're marked six feet away from each other so you can ha keep a six feet distance with other shoppers. There weren't that many shoppers in the store when we were there. We essentially, anytime we were in a certain wing of the store, we practically had that entire wing to ourselves. The book loft has 32 rooms and three floors and then a courtyard that they also sell books on. Uh, so I didn't get any shots in the courtyard. We didn't really go out into the courtyard. I think now that we know the layout of the way things are, um, we're definitely going to spend a little extra time but we didn't want to get overwhelmed with being back in a public space because ian and i have been isolating and social distancing to the best of our abilities um when i'm not working i am here <laughs> and sometimes we'll go to the grocery store so i didn't want to get overwhelmed in a public space and weekend days for the book loft are typically their busiest. Typically there's like 50 to 100 people in the store on a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon. And there was like, I think 10 other people at maximum, not count counting the booksellers working. Uh, the booksellers working, there were like four uh, that I saw personally. But they had hand sanitizer stations all throughout the store. And then they also had baskets on the floor for you to discard books that you picked up and weren't getting and changed your mind on which i thought was really cool and then at the checkout they had the checkout in a completely different spot in the store they had it in the very back by another exit there's like five different doors for the book loft like remember when we first started dating and we're like there's so many doors to this place but only one entrance there yeah but only one way to get in like the main entrance is typically the courtyard entrance uh all the other doors are like emergency exits and alarms will go off however during this time they're letting people in from the side street entrance like when you like first pass the book loft before you enter the courtyard there's another door uh and it takes you through into the children's and ya section and then there's a doorway when you go up a little further uh there's like a fork you can either go straight into like the spiritualism section to the right is the sh is a staircase to go up and then to the left is the door to go to the courtyard. Uh, so they really have things like sanctioned off in a really helpful way that I found was very like user friendly. It wasn't super complicated. They had signs like, oh, checkout is now in this room and like which door goes to where, what's a faster checkout and things of that nature. So I think that that was a really helpful way to have the store direct traffic if they have a busier day, but like, I said, or maybe I didn't say, I don't know, but on the website it says they're not allowing any more than 24 people into the store at a time. Your appointment uh, on the website secures you and one other person. If you wanted to have like a big group of people, you had to make multiple appointments or call the store. So I thought that was really cool, but it was very eerie. Every time I've been in there, it's always been 
really busy, really packed with people, which I'm not mad about. I don't have a problem with going to a busy bookstore because I love seeing the book loft have business, but it does get a little overwhelming, especially if you see in my clips that the walkways are very narrow. So having the entire store pretty much to ourselves was really, really neat. And it was a really great experience having hand sanitizer everywhere. And then at the checkout at the back of the store, you had the option to bag your own books. So they're not touching your books and uh, to bag them. And then when they were checking us out, um, the booksellers were wearing gloves. And the checkout station was like on a table sectioned off by like a plexi like screen. So that way there's no like direct contact, which I think is really, really cool. I had a really positive experience. I would definitely do this again. Ian, would you do it again? I would yeah. definitely make another appointment if we're like jonesing to get out for a little bit. We can always stop in. Like they have the appointments uh, on the website or you can just go there and be like, can I come in? But I think making the appointment is a really cool way to definitely make sure that you're going at the time that you want to go and you can kind of pick when you want to go and they, they're typically open until 11 p.m. but right now they're closing at 9 and they run the appointments until 8. So you do run the possibility of having the entire bookstore to yourself and I think that's a really awesome thing. Everyone's dream, honestly. <laughs> also, you have to wear a mask to go in and every bookseller is wearing a mask while they're working. One of the employees definitely had like, it looked like, remember the Zoo Pals plates? Like that Zoo Pals makes eating fun. Yeah. His like tiger mask definitely gave off strong Zoo Pals energy it and did. I loved yeah. it. I had a phenomenal experience. I would definitely do this again. And in the meantime, like if they decide to not do appointments anymore or if like there's a day where I really don't want to be around people they also have a curbside pickup option still which is really really great it's contactless they put the books in a bag seal it and leave it on the curb we'll leave it on like a table at the curb you know what I mean and like it's not totally contactless like they stand there and make sure that you get it and no one like steals your books which is really cute this is wonderful the book loft is quite literally my favorite place in the world I was talking to Ian about this on the drive there that like I don't have an issue with bars being closed, restaurants being closed, like not being able to get my hair or nails done because I can't have my nails done for work. I shaved my head like <laughs> but one of the biggest hard things for me is the fact that bookstores are like my solace, like my like my safe place to go if I want to get away from things and the book loft has always been a like not a second home to me. That sounds really dramatic, but like a an extra place for me to go to feel safe and welcome and I, I always feel really good at the book loft and not being able to go there and like be there was really heartbreaking but at the end of the day like whatever keeps this from spreading and getting worse I'm going to do. I just wanted to have like a safe trip there and I wanted to see what this experience was like to so I could talk about it and also because I was in the mood to buy some books but this was a really safe way to shop for books and if there's a day where I'm feeling a little like uncomfy about touching things they offer gloves and they have hand sanitizer everywhere and I think that it was really well maintained and it was it was great it wasn't chaotic it was wonderful everyone at the book loft is exceptional I love the booksellers there they make my heart so happy but now I'm going to show you the books that I bought and Ian was a huge enabler Every time I picked, like I looked, I didn't pick everything up. Every time I looked at something, he was like, just get it. Just get it. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I got four books and I also got a piece of merchandise because who am I? Uh, the first one I got is the last book on the left. And this is like the last podcast on the left book. And I like that podcast a lot. And it's stories of murder and mayhem from history's most notorious serial killers. And like... I don't want to say I love serial killers because that sounds wrong, but I do enjoy studying serial killers and learning about them and things like that. And I really like last podcast on the left and I wanted to get this. It was 30% off because it's like a new release. Yeah, I'm jazzed about this. Then I got Smoke Gets In Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory by Caitlin Doty. A uh, cat from Paperback Dreams talked about this and I like would take her recommendation if she told me to jump in front of a bus. So when she recommends a book so highly, I definitely put it on my radar, just whoop, it's right there. She mentioned this and she like can't stop talking about it apparently and I love the concept of death in the death industry. I think it's really interesting, but I'm really excited about this and I can't wait to just peel all these fucking stickers off. I also got a pin. I see this pin every time we go and I think it's so cute. It's by Rather Keen 
And it's like a bottle cap that says pumpkin juice. Oh, look at me doing the beauty YouTuber like, you see it? My autofocus. <laughs> I am your typical bisexual who has a denim jacket with pins on it. Y'all know. Then I got this. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. The Hunger Games prequel with this bird like breaking its neck basically. This is a prequel about President Snow. Cool. I like, I was such a hoe for the Hunger Games in middle school and high school and I couldn't not read this. Like even if I hate President Snow, I love a villain origin story. I think they're fun and fresh and like I literally like used to suckle Suzanne Collins' teat when it came to Hunger Games content. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And I wanted new Hunger Games content and I got it just way later than I wanted it, but I'm still gonna read this. I'm seeing mixed reviews of it, but I wanna be part of the discourse, so. And the final book I got was a total like whim buy. I saw it on clearance for $9 and Ian was like, get it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine. Uh, and it's an autographed copy of A Map of Days. Uh, which is the fourth novel in Miss Peregrine's Home for Pecu the Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children's series. Um, I have not read the first three books in this. I have them, and I don't know why I haven't read them yet. I've just never felt like pushed to do it, but maybe this will push me. Is this like too far past its prime to talk about these books? I don't know because. I mean, I thought it was a trilogy, and then I saw the fourth book, and then I saw the fifth book lingering around, but it was on clearance. Why am I trying to peel the sticker off right now in real time? It's, it was on clearance for $9 for a hardcover, and she's thick. She's real thick. 480 pages of thick. Um, and I love the creepy pictures in these. I'm pretty sure this takes place in a- nope, it, it follows the same kid. Never mind. I don't know shit about this. So that was my experience of making an appointment to shop at my favorite bookstore during this really odd time. Uh, let me know if your bookstores are opening back up, if they're doing curbside pickup or delivery, what the deal is with supporting indie bookstores. Uh, I have a whole ass other video about the best ways that you can support independent bookstores during this time while they're still closed. Sound off, how you're feeling, what the deal is, uh, and all those things. And if you like my content and my mug and my bald ass head, uh, you're more than welcome to subscribe. I upload frequently enough. <laughs> um, and my name is Morgan. This is Morgie Reads. I hope you have a phenomenal rest of your day and happy reading. Okay, bye.